So recently I put out a poll on the channel asking all of you what specific 15 minute meal video you wanna see me make. And it was pretty much a dead even tie between both Mexican and Thai cuisine. And I already brought in some serious backup with my friend Derek for the Thai video. But when it comes to Mexican food, that is something that I've been practicing and studying and cooking basically since the beginning of my professional cooking journey many years ago. And what I love about Mexican food is that if you're using fresh ingredients, at its core, it's pretty simple. So as my life has gotten so much busier, I've been able to just seamlessly adapt to still be able to pump out incredible Mexican dishes. So today what I'm gonna be doing is showing you a few of my favorite Mexican meals that I continue to turn to when I only have 15 minutes to cook. Let's make some shrimp. Oh yeah. Shrimp, one of my favorite <laughs> proteins for quick dinners. And I have been making these garlic shrimp tostadas for a while now. This garlicky marinade is such a great way to impart an intense amount of flavor. And then once you have these delicious shrimp, well, you can do a lot of things with them. Shrimp kebab, shrimp, shrimp creole, shrimp, shrimp soup, pineapple, shrimp, lemon shrimp. shrimp. That's about it. Today, we're gonna be making tostadas. So first thing, let's make this marinade, wet rub, ice mix, I don't know, call it whatever you want. Start off with some coriander seeds. The reason I like this is because we can grind it and get this coarseness. That's really nice in the shrimp. Crucial, crucial, crucial step. Make sure your shrimp are extra dry if you want a really nice sear. Spread them out. Pat those babies dry. A lot of shrimp come frozen and are defrosted, so they carry a ton of extra moisture, which makes this step even more important. Beautiful. Let's find the right bowl. Where are you, bowl? Yeah, that's the size I want. Can't underrate the perfect bowl size, you know? All right, so I'm gonna go in with my coriander, super floral kick, and then Hiya! garlic. We want a lot of it. These are garlic shrimp. That's the star ingredient. I just wanna, oh, God damn it. Just wanna pop off the skins, keep them whole. By far the easiest way to impart aromatic flavor is with this microplane. You see it all the time in these 15 minute meals. And like, don't grate off your fingers, just throw that in there. Too close, we'll get the job done. I almost forgot the key steps to all of these 15 minute meals, preheating your pan. And I'm very excited to try out this new skillet from Great Jones. That is the garlic flavor we want, boom. And then I'll hit it with a little olive oil. Just helps kind of emulsify this wet rub. Salt, of course. And a little bit of pep. Pep, 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 pep. Toss, 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 toss. Ow, shrimp tail in the finger. That right there is what you're looking for. Instant flavor blast. Just a little bit more olive oil in here to protect from sticking. We are smoking and ready to go. I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit. Ooh, and just lay them on there and listen to that glorious sizzle. The smells, if you could smell this right now. When that coriander and garlic just hit the pan, they make love, basically. They make sweet, sweet love. You know what, I'm gonna go on with just half of these. And in the meantime, you know we are multitasking on 15 minute meals. So what I'm gonna do is make a pairing for this tostada. Now you could do salsa, creamy sauce. I'm gonna make a really just fresh, light slaw to go on top. So I have half a cabbage, take off that outer leaf, cut it in half, remove the core, compost, compost. And I want this super fine. If things start to get a little wobbly, just turn it. Find the side with the most surface area. Come on, come on. Come Come on, come on. Some of that. Pop that right into a bowl. No, too small. No, I don't like it. You know what, I'll make this slaw on a plate. That's just dumb. My God, I've never had such issues choosing the right bowl. Oh, there it is, in the dishwasher. Yes. Thank you. I think we're ready to turn these shrimp. We'll see how they're doing. Oh, just a little jar there. That's totally fine. Flavor. Let those cook. Continue on this slaw. For a little color and flavor, I'm gonna grate some carrot right into there. I've got a little bit of cilantro from the garden. Slice that up rough. Now, this is very, very exciting stuff. This right here, it's actually not a lime. It's an unripened lemon that I grew myself. Now, of course, I live on the East Coast, so to grow this lemon, I had to bring it in in the winter, and I put it out in the summer, and it actually produced some solid fruit. This is actually a Meyer lemon, so it should be nice and sweet. So, whoa! The green outside is throwing me off. 
That's so good. I wouldn't have done that if it wasn't a Meyer lemon. Homegrown citrus in New York. This will add color and a little spice kick. Chop that up real nice and fine. Okay. And once your shrimp are firm, now I can use this plate. Pop those off. Okay, one thing I wanna do is just try to get up a little bit of that flavor action. I'm actually going to fry some tortillas right in there. Shabang. Let's see if we can scrape a little bit of that up. Oh yeah, that's flavor. That is flavor. We're gonna keep those crispy bits. That's crispy garlicky goodness. A little tiny bit more oil. I'll lather these up on one side just to soak up that oil and then turn them over to suck up the rest of the oil. Did I add salt to this? No, I did not. Boom, boom, boom. That should do it. I'm gonna work that in and it's all right to crunch it up a little bit. Just break down that cabbage like you're making sauerkraut. Oh wow, these tortillas are puffing up. That is pretty cool. Check this out. Look at that puff. I feel like everything just works better when you use a legitimate cast iron skillet like this. The results you get are always just a little bit better. Okay, I'm gonna pop the tails off the shrimp. I gotta eat some of this crispy goodness just to taste that. Oh, so good. Wow. Sprinkle on that crispy garlic, coriander, and then I'm gonna just rough chop through this. I'm just trying to get a nice top for the tostadas. And depending on how many people you're cooking for, that could be perfect for a few tostadas and you can save the rest of the shrimp. And these are perfectly crispy. Pop those down here and we'll plate it up. So one thing I will add is just some fresh avocado to the base since these are pretty simple. And this to me just creates an instant creamy element. Since we don't have the time to make a crema. Half an avocado, perfect for two. This might be sacrilege, but I'm not salting the avocado because this shrimp has got a nice salty kick, especially with those crispy bits. Finally, we dress with the slaw. Oh, those look fantastic. I mean, the first goal of a 15 minute meal is always survival. Can we put food on the table that also tastes good? But if you can also impress in 15 minutes, then you've really won the game. This is gourmet. I mean, you serve this to me in a restaurant, I'm happy. Mm. Okay. Okay. It's the first thing I've eaten today. Great way to break a fast. Mmm. Mmm. You can put that marinade on any protein you want. These could be tacos. This could be a rice bowl. Super customizable. But fresh, flavorful, and quick. Mm. So up next, we are making soup. A tortilla soup that comes together very quickly with a few fun little hacks, you could call them. But first, we need some base aromatics for this soup. So let's take a little trip to the garden. All right. For the aromatics for this soup, I think I can get everything from these garden beds. So let's get to picking. First, we've got a bunch of peppers right here. A few different types. Those are jalapenos, habaneros, don't need those. A little too spicy for this soup. These are actually some sweet peppers that I'll definitely snatch a few of. These are all carrots right here. It's my first time growing them. Let's pull and see what we can get. Always a bit of a surprise. Okay. Oh, okay. That's a solid size right there. Solid. And a little white one. <laughs> Gonna rip these off. Just throw that back in there to decompose. This whole patch here is fennel. That's doing really well. Fennel's one of my favorite aromatics for a soup base. So we'll pop. Probably just take two of these. And now there's one more key element to this dish. That insanely overgrown patch of tomatoes. But when you get up in here, it's just like a little magical land of cherry tomatoes. Look at me in here. Just everywhere. The birds got them early in the season, but now I can't even keep up with it. And that should do the trick. Now we can make some soup. So I've got my aromatics here. I'm gonna start off with these fennel and I'm just gonna slice it up nice and thin. Save this maybe for the top. Peppers up next. I'll slice around to get the seeds removed. And then once all your seeds are removed, I'm just gonna slice through them. Add that to the mix. Oh yeah, this jalapeno for some heat. Boom. Carrots, tops off. And these are organic, so no need to peel. Oh, one more thing. Clove of garlic. Never hurts. Unless you're allergic to garlic, I guess. Boom. Add some olive oil to our preheated pot. Get these up tan. I'll add some salt right away so that water draws out and we can cook these even faster. So if you remember the first recipe ever on the 15 minute meal series, I used cherry tomatoes for the pasta sauce because they are just preloaded with flavor. I'm gonna use them again, but in a different form. Going in with the air fryer, dump them in there. Oh, that one is a little bird damage. Give them a quick spray with some oil. Roll them around. High blast. We're gonna roast these tomatoes. Eight minutes. And these are looking great. Softening up. We're not gonna get perfectly caramelized aromatics. We just don't have the time, but we can still build a lot of flavor in just a few minutes. Back with the mortar and pestle. A little bit of cumin seeds. Very light crush. And end. Oh, instantaneous aromas. Woohoo! 
Woo! Right when it hit the oil. That was amazing. There's just a few more things to prep. They call that an ear of corn, right? Shucked and ready to come right off the cob. Basically taking the general concept of a tortilla soup and adding whatever in season. Now for these tortillas, we're gonna use them in two ways. I'll take one and just rip it up. Dump that right up, dump that right in. Start toasting those up a little bit. Eh, you know what? I think it might need another half. When this soup gets blended, that will thicken it up and also give it flavor. In the other form, cut these tortillas right in half and thinly slice them for some little tortilla strips that will air fry once those tomatoes are done. Okay, now I can add the corn and then just let all of that continue to cook. And our tomatoes should be done. Yes, yes, yes. It's called roasty, roasty, roasty. Instant tomato soup. Roasted tomato tomato soup that is. Oh, you son of a... So hot. Kind of felt like there was a chance that would happen. Okay, so now this should take, you know, maybe two, three minutes. Spray those, hit them with just a little salt, and then into the air fryer, 380, three minutes. Now we can add some liquid. You can use chicken stock if you want. You can add some cream to this if you want. I'm adding water, still gonna be incredible. To crank that heat up. I'm looking for my good old friend, the emulsion, the immersion blender. Yeah. <laughs> I'll start blending. Consistency is up to you. I prefer having some texture. We can kind of see what the thing is made of. You can see the little bits of corn and veggies. I like that. Stir. God, that looks so good. Finally, we taste. Holy crap, that is good. It's insane how much flavor was just built in a matter of like 12 minutes. It's just the tiniest bit of salt. We'll check on. Oh my God, perfect timing. Look at this. Two, one. <laughs> yep, crispy. All right, let's plate this up. Wow, perfect consistency. Nice and chunky. And tortilla soup to me. It's all about the fixins on top. That's where it really comes together. Fix some avocado. Oh, <laughs> food flinging out of my hands. Slice that up. Cubes. It's like you can spend 15 minutes on a meal and then just do what you can to fancy it up a bit. A little bit of this fennel top here. Some fresh and yeasty flavor. It's great. And then we'll stack high, as high as we can with these. And you cannot forget a little bit of that fresh Meyer lemon in this case. Exciting stuff. Oh, 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 find me. Find me, camera. This is one of those dishes that's extremely customizable with what you have. I mean, I try to make most of these dishes with that in mind. As long as you're sticking to the general concepts, any aromatics, any additional flavorings, it's gonna work great. Mm. Wow, it's complex. So often when I'm cooking a soup, I'm focused on building flavor over a long period of time. Slowly caramelizing aromatics, slow cooking stocks and things of that nature. But this is refreshing. It's so bright because the vegetables are so fresh. They're not broken down over a super long cooking period. And you've definitely got some leftovers there. Mm. Oh, soup, I'm like. Damn luck. So before we get in the next recipe, I wanted to quickly introduce a new brand that we just got in the shop, which is Great Jones, which has been an absolute treat to really test out over the last few months. Now their pots and pans are super high quality and definitely built to last you a lifetime. And because they're a direct to consumer founded brand, they're hitting a really nice price point. And what's awesome about these pans is they're kind of multifunction. Of course they crush when you're cooking food, but also if you're just looking for like a beautiful accessory, their pots and pans and accessories have that nice retro feel. They come in a multitude of color, multitude? They come in a number of different colors to really give your kitchen a nice pop. So if you're in the market for a new Dutch oven, or maybe you're just looking to level up your kitchen gear in general, head over to prohomecooks.com, browse our selection. We've been working really hard over the last year to form relationships with the best brands in the kitchen space. Everything from the legacy brands that people have grown to love over the years to a lot of the new age direct to consumer brands that have never really been brought together before in a multi-brand shopping experience. That was the goal, really, to give all of you the best shopping experience possible to level up your home cooking. So check it out and we'll get back to the recipes. All right, so this last one's gonna be a bit of a freestyle. I do have the general concept of making huevos rancheros, but kind of done in a very unique way, which I owe credit to Josh, my brother, for. So if you've watched this channel for like over seven years, maybe you've seen something like this. And if not, get ready for a fun, 
little trick. So I certainly need to grab some eggs right here. Chickens are hungry, but I'm also gonna just take a run through the garden and see what's fresh that I can add to this dish. Chickies. This silver lid scares the shit out of them for some reason. It's all right, it's just a lid. I need two eggs and I think that's all I'm gonna get today. All right, I better make these go to good use. This is my Jurassic Park style deer fence. These zucchinis have been popping. You've seen me use them in a lot of videos recently. That's a little one, but perfect for this recipe. I will grab some more tomatoes since I have them. Why not make like a quick salsa? Moving on. Oh, definitely take him. Slice it. Oh, eggplant. I'm gonna want some of this cilantro for the salsa. Jalapeno. We've got a whole little salsa bed here. All right, I think that right there will do the trick. All right, a nice little harvest. Gonna grab a few more things from the fridge. Need those tortillas again. That's been a theme, obviously, in every single recipe. Want a little bit of cheese, sour cream, chipotle's in adobo sauce. I think that's it. All right, let's get this same pan rocking. This Great Jones griddle pan worked out so well in the first recipe. Let's give it another shot. I'm gonna chop up these veggies just to get them sauteing off. And for a 15 minute meal, the key is to just cut things small so it cooks fast. So slice these down into just little tiny cubes. Same thing for the zucchini, QB cubes. Let's get some olive oil in that pan. Start frying. Let's get cooking, my friends. That's what you're here for, right? So there's two main topics, chipotle cream sauce and a salsa. And I'm gonna start with the chipotle cream sauce. We'll start off with some sour cream. I'm gonna hit that with mayo as well. Mayo is just a nice balancer for the heaviness of sour cream. We've got some of that mayor lemon. Cut it in half, squeeze that in there. Pop this open. Yeah! There's so much flavor in there. I'll just crush up some of those with my hands. A little bit of salt. I think that's probably all we need for a really, 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 really simple chipotle cream sauce. It's all about flavor in a short period of time and that does the trick. Oh yeah, browning. Browning! So that's done. So now I'm gonna make a Call it a cutting board salsa. Straight up rattle through these tomatoes. I do have some onion over here. Don't need much, just a little chunk of onion. Essential though for a good salsa. We'll go in with that cilantro and then a little bit of that jalapeno. So then I might even want to bring in a bigger knife. The big boy coming out. We'll hit it with lime. Salt. Now we can basically create a human food processor. You're just chopping it through, holding it over so it's even, making sure those juices don't run off the board. Wow. There you go. That's freaking pico de gallo if I've ever seen it. I mean, I just made cream sauce and pico in five minutes. All right, so I'll just pop that into a little serving bowl. Get as much of that juice as possible. All right, we've got our flavorings. Let's bring this together. We need to season our veggies just a bit. Give them one final mix. Push them off to the side for now and just let them chill out. So you know, like an egg in the hole or toad in the hole, there's different terms for it. So I have no idea if Josh actually created this technique. Whether he did or didn't, it is genius. This right here has got a nice Nice edge and it's the perfect size. Hey! Boom, so get those frying. Need a little bit more oil, of course. So we're gonna pop these in and start frying those off on one side. That is phase one. Just like that tostada from recipe one, you wanna get that underside nice and crispy. Now once that's nice and crispy, we'll go in with our eggs very gently. Oh so, yeah, success. Success. Thank you, chickens. We'll let those fry up for a little bit. We'll grate on some cheese, whatever you have. This is some Gruyere. And if it gets on the outside, that's fine, because that will get nice and crispy, making magic here. Now when it's crispy on the underside, we're gonna flip, turn it up a little bit, flip. Oh, so Okay, that one broke a little bit, happens. Oh, let's flip these little donut holes. <laughs> and really at this point, we're just frying it up on the other side so we get a nice over easy egg or just cook it however you prefer. All right, I think we're ready. Crispy cheese, we'll lay over those veggies. Drizzle, drizzle, pico. Oh, wow. I gotta owe it to just Mexican cuisine. Shout out. The ability to get fancy with it and impress. Not that this is fancy, but I've impressed myself today. It's one of those days. Mm. Mm. All I'm gonna say is Chipotle cream sauce for the win. That's fire. That is fire. Mm. Mm. The ability to make such incredibly flavor packed dishes in a short period of time. It's just a perfect cuisine for 15 minute meals. You saw how easy it is. Just make it. That's a wrap. Three awesome recipes under 15 minutes. Comment in below with what other cuisines you wanna see turned into 15 minutes and I'll see you in the next video.